Squids and other such cephalopods are already incredibly early in animals, having a range of features that make them truly peculiar, from their intelligence, malleable bodies and tentacles, as well as their colour changing capabilities. But one thing that you would not expect from them is the capability of flies, but it is very much a real occurrence. Observations of squid flights have been observed in a variety of species and for different lengths of times and reasons, although said observations are infrequent, as catching a squid in the process of flying is still quite a feat, as it happens so fast, and that you often have to be in the right place in the right time. Although through accumulating anecdotal, photographic and video evidence, there is no doubt that this phenomenon is real and widespread. Sylvia Messia, along with her husband Michael Robinson, were boating on the northern coast of Jamaica in the summer of 2001, when they identified something soaring out of the sea. At first thinking the animal was a member of the flying fish family, it became apparent that after tracing the creature's graceful arc for a few seconds, they realised this was no fish. This was a squid, and it was flying. They eventually identified the animal as a Caribbean reef squid, lithe, torpedo-shaped cephalopods that have long fins. Potentially startled by the noise of the boat's outboard engine, the 20 cm long mollusk was estimated to have travelled a height of around 2 metres above the water, and travelled a distance of a total of 10 metres, 50 times their body length. What's more, the squids actually extended their fins and flayed their tentacles in a radial pattern while airborne, as though gliding its flights, also maintaining their posture as they did so. This sighting led Messia to co-author one of the first studies on squid aeronautics in 2004, with her and her husband calling on other researchers who had witnessed said phenomenon, as they had not personally observed it themselves before their encounter. They received numerous replies, with 14 published reports from between 1892 and 2004, documenting six distinct squid species being observed squirting themselves as high as 3 metres over the waves using jet propulsion, the process of taking in and forcing out liquids to generate thrust. Sometimes they flew alone, and other times in groups, occasionally matching the speeds of passing boats. Said results were published in the Journal of Molluscan Studies, although it includes no photographs or video clips, as said evidence was largely anecdotal, especially back when it was published, coupled with the fact that sightings are rare due to many people not being near where they occur, with many reports coming from ships out at sea, and if they are, they are usually unprepared for such a sight. Many squids also practice dial migration, where they stay in deep water during the day, then rising into shallow waters at night. This is made further evident by the fact that instances of sailors discovering squids on the decks of their boats in the early morning have occurred. Masir and colleagues pointed out that the behaviour seemed to be fairly rare, with some observations noting that species known to do this behaviour that, whilst being chased by predators in some cases, did not take to the air, even when they could and should be able to. These aerial manoeuvres, while impressive, could be dismissed as gliding, although there is evidence that suggests otherwise. Squid are already used to gliding through water, so the same physiology they utilise there also manages to work well in allowing them to manoeuvre in a different medium. The previously mentioned 2004 paper argues that gliding is too passive of a term to describe what they do when they leave the ocean for the air, as many observations seem to indicate that they engage in behaviours to prolong their flights. To exit the water in the first place, their method of jet propulsion is key. To do this, squids pump water into the cavity where the gills are located, behind the mantle cavity, and expelling it quickly through their siphon, the flexible tube below their heads. By changing the position of their siphon, they can then propel themselves in almost any direction, including upwards and into the air. Once in the air, it has also been observed that they are then able to spread out their fins and tentacles, with the webbing between the latter assisting in creating aerodynamic lifts and keeping them stable on their flight arcs. They've also been observed to have a highly developed flying posture, having some degree of control, unlike the ballistic jumps of, say, dolphins. And as such, the term flying squid is used over gliding squids, as they have been observed to engage in behaviours that prolong the time they remain in the air, and, as well as being able to control their movements, can be considered as true flight. Before re-entry, squid have also been observed to fold their fins back into place to minimise their impact once coming back in contact with water, with the families Omas Trifidae and Onychotuthidae being the most well known for said capabilities, indicating that they were aware of their landings and take measures to make them more effective. Their flights are also quite fast, with them being able to, in the case of the neon flying squid, travel faster than Usain Bolt can run with scientists in Japan calculating that they can reach speeds of up to 11.2 metres per second, 40 kilometres per hour, significantly faster than the 10.31 metres per second that Bolt averaged in the 100 metre final at the London Olympics. Said flights has also been thought to be useful in evading numerous predators, including whales, seals and rays, although it may also be useful in boosting their travel efficiency. Using rapid succession photos of squid breaching, it has been estimated that their velocity while flying is up to five times faster when moving through air, 
with this potentially being utilised by squids to reduce the amount of energy needed for long journeys. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.